All right, looking at a chilly start to your Thursday, but a beautiful day all in all. Now, readings in the morning are going to be in the low 40s. So you'll want a jacket early on, but I, by afternoon, uh, that jacket's coming off because temperatures are going to warm up nicely. In fact, it looks like highs up near 70 degrees. Skies are going to be mostly sunny for the afternoon hours, and we've got a nice stretch of weather that's going to take us right into the upcoming weekend. 80s in the forecast, at least on Saturday. I'll more on that coming up. All right, Jamie, thank you. Let's get right to your top headlines. These stories are real and new now. It's been nearly one year since the tornado outbreak in the Ozarks, and while there were no confirmed tornadoes from the storms last night, some are still left to clean up after the strong winds. Students at area colleges will finish the spring semester at home, but will they return in the fall? We speak with one university who says on-campus classes will be back in session. And the coronavirus has also wreaked havoc on the state of Missouri's budget. What reductions will be made heading into the next fiscal year? Ozarks Fox News at 9 starts right now. Real. New. Now. This is Ozarks Fox News at 9. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jennifer Abreu. And I'm John Adams. We are nearly one year removed from an outbreak of 26 tornadoes that resulted in damage all over the Ozarks. On April 30th, 2019, there were 11 EF zeros. 14 EF ones and one EF two tornado causing wide ranging damage in the Ozarks. This video right here is one example. This was an EF two tornado that swept through the city of Ozark. But today people are picking up the pieces from a round of storms that swept through the area last night. Our Jesse Inman joins us now after catching up with some of those folks in the middle of the cleanup. Jesse. Yeah, that's right, guys. It was really nothing compared to what we saw last year. We had no confirmed tornadoes last night, but still some pretty strong winds that wreaked some havoc of their own. And especially over in the area of Fort and Catalpa here in Springfield, where limbs and parts of some pretty big trees were split, laying all over yards and sidewalks. And right there in Fort, look at this one here we've got for you. One resident let us in her backyard to see that Wind had snapped her neighbor's tree, which fell into her yard and flattened her fence, her shed, and her fire pit. Now, across the street, Abraham Mejia recruited the help of a friend to clean up some limbs strewn about his lawn, and Mejia told us that he has some other damage to tend to as well. On the back of my house, I had a carport that just got blown over. It got snapped. If, if you look at it, you can see the, the metal beams where it was sitting on. They were snapped off and right now it's just sitting on top of my roof. I'm waiting for insurance to call me back, but either that, if they don't call me back by tomorrow, we'll probably just bring it down. Lots of debris there. And one issue with that actually is the yard waste recycling center that people would normally take their limbs to to dump off in a situation like this is closed due to the stay at home order. So hopefully the city will be able to clear up some of that tomorrow. And Jen, I know you have more on that. Yes, Jesse, we'll know more details regarding the recycling centers and other businesses in Greene County tomorrow. Let's check in on those local news. So businesses around the state are set to open next week under Governor Mike Parson's Road to Recovery Plan. But tomorrow morning, we'll hear what guidelines Springfield and Greene County leaders are handing out to local businesses. Mayor Ken McClure, Greene County Commissioner Bob Dixon, and Health Director Clay Goddard will announce the first phase to reopening. That's at 1030 tomorrow morning. We will be streaming this press conference live on our website and Facebook page. Officials will also have a live question and answer session on Facebook to clarify any concerns with the public. And that is tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. And while we wait to find out what guidelines the city releases tomorrow, some businesses are already making adjustments. The Battlefield Mall announced that it will reopen its doors to shoppers starting on May the 4th. The mall will be implementing reduced hours and enhanced cleaning procedures. All employees will be screened before every shift. There will also be instructions from CDC guidelines and wear pro protective gear while on property. All shoppers will be encouraged to wear a face covering as well as frequently sanitizing hands at sanitizer stations placed throughout the mall. We are also learning about the latest cancellations due to COVID-19. The Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau announced two more events have been canceled. 
The Gold Wing Road Riders Association canceled its Wing Ding 42 motorcycle rally in Springfield scheduled for the end of June, but it is considering rebooking the event here in Springfield in either 2021 or 2022. And the National Street Road Association Mid-America Street Rod Nationals scheduled for May 22nd through May 24th has also been canceled. Planners are hoping to rebook later this year, and the event is expected to return in 2021 and 2022. The Convention and Visitors Bureau says the events were expected to bring nearly 14,000 visitors to the city. New at 9 tonight, colleges and universities across the Ozarks are already making plans for the fall, and some of them might look a little bit different as a result of COVID-19. Our Madison Heaver spoke with Drury University about their plans and joins us in, a, in the studio now to explain. Madison, what did you hear from Drury today? Yeah, John, Drury plans to reopen for in-person classes this fall, but that's not without some changes that will be made. Classes will be small, meaning no big lectures. This will allow for desks to be moved if social distancing is still a requirement come August. The university is considering and weighing all options as the start of the new school year comes around, including the possibility of wearing face masks. Dr. Tim Cloyd, the president of Drew University, says though the fall may look a bit different from years past, the school is determined to hold in-person classes. He also says virtual class settings just aren't cutting it for students connecting face-to-face uh, -face is a completely different experience than a virtual experience. Um, you know, we've, we're finding that students, high school students and um, university students in the age group from 18 to 22, 23, don't really like the um, virtual format um, that's isolating. Uh, students want the socialization. Uh, they want interaction with their peers. As for the other two big colleges in Springfield, we have more from Missouri State President Cliff Smart and OTC President Hal Higdon about what they plan on doing in the fall coming up at 930. Madison, thank you. Springfield Public Schools announced today its Teacher of the Year. Armando Johnson was selected from over 220 nominees. He's a Spanish teacher at Central High School. The district calls him inequity champion. Johnson joined SBS in 2011 and has taught Spanish for 22 years. One of his goals, he says, is to be the person he needed growing up for underrepresented youth. He incorporates sign language and Latin American identity and history in his Spanish classes. Johnson and four other finalists will be honored at a banquet in August. Johnson will go on to compete for the regional title of Teacher of the Year. In political news tonight, the coronavirus is taking a toll on the state's budget. The Missouri House approved a budget plan today that includes reductions for the upcoming fiscal year. The more than $30 billion plan approved by the House is approximately $150 million less than last year's budget. It does not include any tax increases to make up for that reduction. Now, cuts include re reduced spending on higher education. The plan will now head to the Senate for consideration. Lawmakers have a constitutional duty to pass a balanced budget by May 8th. As May 4th approaches, Missouri Governor Mike Parson believes the state is in good shape and ready to move forward with reopening, but warned COVID-19 won't simply go away. He said the state is on target with the plan his administration has mapped out for recovery by expanding statewide testing capacity and keeping pressure off the hospital system. As for the economic impact of the closure, the state labor department today said it has processed more than 400,000 initial and unemployment claims. The department also noted that nearly half a billion dollars in state and federal aid have been paid out to Missourians. More local news for you tonight. Area food pantries and shelters are ramping up their efforts to serve those who are hungry and struggling through this pandemic. The Salvation Army is teaming up with other food pantries for the Have Faith Initiative. A spokesperson with the Salvation Army says they are joining Cross Lines, Grand Oaks Mission, and Victory Mission for the initiative. Food barrels will be placed at area stores for donations. The organizations are hoping the community can come forward to help with food donations to avoid having to reduce this critical shortage. Service, critical service.
And we want to remind you of how you can put the Ozarks first. Ozarks Fox and Color 10 are hosting a fundraiser for Convoy of Hope, Ozarks Food Harvest, and Cross Lines. You can join us tomorrow for stories of, of how these organizations are helping relieve hunger here in the Ozarks. These groups can take a dollar and turn it into seven or ten dollars. That's why monetary donations are so important. You can donate now on our website, OzarksFirst.com. You just click on the Putting the Ozarks First tab at the top of that page. And then join us tomorrow in every newscast as we share the stories of these local organizations. Check in with Jamie once again. We've been looking forward to this promised warm-up here at the end of the week, Jamie, and it is almost here, right? It's almost here. I know today was chilly, but things are going to be warming day by day as we head into this upcoming weekend, and timing couldn't be better as we get into this weekend. We're going to find some very warm spring-like readings, and it's going to come with fairly quiet weather conditions, at least until Sunday. I'll have more on uh, this forecast, which features warmth and also some storms down the road coming up next. You're watching.